Well, welcome to the very Reverend William Macmillan Library here in Dunmurray. And this is the second in our series of short talks about some of the interesting books held by the library. Now, I'm standing in front of what we call special collections. And it's really a collection of mostly older books, but which all relate to the history of our denomination, to the history of our church. So we have here all the journals associated with the non-subscribing Presbyterian Church of Ireland. And there are a few places that have as full a set as we do here. But we also have many other books uh, to do with our history, which are all very interesting and they're housed in here. So we have a great collection of historical books housed here and anyone undertaking any research to do with the history of our church will find much that is useful and interesting and exciting here. But there's one particular book I'd like to look at today and it's not a unique book like the one we looked at last time but it is an important book for those undertaking historical research especially in connection with our denomination. And the book uh, I'd like to have a look at is this one. It's published in 1897. It's not in great shape, but it's a very important book. And its title is The Vestiges of Protestant Dissent. And it's written by George E. Evans. Now, G. E. Evans was a Welshman who was also a minister and a considerable historian and antiquary. And indeed, today, because of his work, particularly with Welsh church records, uh, he has an entry in the Dictionary of Welsh Biography. But this is the, the title page. And one of the interesting features of this book is the attractive uh, illustrations produced by uh, G. H. Burgess. There's one there of the pulpit in Ipswich. Or we can have a look at this one, uh, which is some of the uh, communion silver held by the Belfast non-subscribing Presbyterian churches. But this book we can see from the flyleaf originally uh, belonged when it was new to Henry J. McCants. 1897. He must have received it when it was brand new. And he, of course, was a very prominent member of the Dunmurray congregation. Indeed, the stained glass window in the church was put there in memory of Henry J. McCants. But he must have given this to uh, the Reverend J.A. Kelly pretty soon after he acquired it himself, because written in Mr. Kelly's hand is presented to J.A. Kelly by the above gentleman. So we know the early provenance of this book and it's a very useful book for anyone trying to undertake research into congregations or into ministers. Now the book basically is a collection of information about every non-subscribing Presbyterian and Unitarian congregation in England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales. And G. E. Evans has listed all the ministers who served each congregation, as well as some other details about those churches and about uh, where you can find more information about them. Now, this doesn't sound that exciting, but when this book was published, uh, finding information like that wasn't easy. So we brought together a lot of diverse information from all over the British Isles and made it available for the researcher. So, for instance, if you are interested in the Reverend David McGuinness, you might know uh, he was minister of York Street in Belfast, where he fell out quite seriously with Henry Montgomery and eventually left uh, to go to a church in England. So if we look him up in the index, we can see that when he left York Street, 
he went to Stourbridge. And finding those kind of connections were not easy for a long time. This was an essential book to put together uh, information like that. So another example would be the Reverend James Malcolm, who was the son of the minister, first of all here at Dunmurray, and then of Newry, the Reverend A.G. Malcolm. And James Malcolm went into the ministry and was the first minister of our now long-closed church at Carrickfergus. But he left Carrickfergus and he went first of all to Billingshurst and then to Boston in Lincolnshire and then to Chester, to Matthew Henry's Chapel in Chester, where he died at a comparatively young age. Now making those links was difficult before G. E. Evans published this book. He must have done an immense amount of research in each place to find a list of ministers. Not an easy thing to do. And today we know there are errors, there are mistakes and so on. But as the basis for searching for ministers and where they were, his book was essential for a long time. Another thing that's interesting about this book are some of the sort of quirky personal additions. So at one point he goes to Lincolnshire to write about the Presbyterian Chapel at a place called Kirkstead. Now the congregation worshipped in Kirkstead Abbey until the year 1793 and G.E. Evans was keen to get inside the Abbey but was denied entry. So what he did was take a photograph of the interior of the Abbey through the keyhole and every copy of his book has a photograph with a keyhole shaped picture of the interior of the Abbey which he tells us he photographed at 6.30 a.m. on the 14th of August 1896. A strange, very curious, very personal detail. And one of the things he notes is that this was the pulpit where the Reverend Dr. John Taylor preached uh, in the 18th century. And in a future talk, we'll have a look at the influence of the Reverend Dr. John Taylor uh, on religion in Belfast. Another personal detail which long intrigued me concerns our congregation in Clock. He produces a list of ministers, as he does uh, everywhere else, and also records that on the 19th of August 1892, I walked from Dundrum to this meeting house, and here saw the communion cups. So I always thought it was strange that he should, he should record in his book the fact that he walked from Dundrum to Clock. And I suppose it's very likely he got the train, uh, the train from Belfast to Newcastle, got off at Dundrum and walked back to Clock. Not a terribly long way, but still a, a fair walk uh, uphill from uh, Dundrum to Clock, as I remember. And I often thought that perhaps uh, when I was Minister of Clock, we should, we should institute a, a recreation of this walk from Dundrum to Clock. Uh, certainly in his day, a much quieter walk. There would only be, I would guess, farm traffic in those days. So this is G. E. Evans' Vestiges of Protestant Descent. The title was given to him, he says, by James Martineau. And anyone interested in this kind of research, he would say to you, or oh, have you checked the vestiges? What does the vestiges say? So it's a kind of book that, that has had a very important place uh, for historical researchers in the history of our denomination. It's probably, it's probably less essential today because there are more books available and there are also a lot uh, of quite useful databases available online. And even this book itself is online if you know where to look. But still, uh, this was the Reverend Max copy. It's also been annotated by him as well as uh, the previous owner, so it is a very useful book, a very interesting book, and one that is essential for research into the history of our denomination. And this is it, The Vestiges 
of Protestant descent. So a quick mention that this Sunday, the 22nd of September, 3 o'clock, we will be dedicating and formally opening the Reverend Max Library here at Dunmurray. And everyone is very welcome.